Jesse, Teddy, congratulations. You boys have made it into the final round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate this. This is a musketeer's rapier. Oh, 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 oh. oh dear. Next stop, I'll be pre-testing the musketeer's rapier. Your rapier's supposed to be light swords. I'm expecting at least a lot of harassing cuts. Harassing cuts are being able to move at a distance and just cut, deep cuts with a tip. So the movements that we do are light movements, light cuts, so that later on we can go in for the finish. Originating in the early 1600s, the musketeer's rapier was the distinctive weapon of the colorful French musketeers of the guard. These elite troops were the first line of defense for French royalty. Featuring a thin diamond profile blade that tapers down to a point, its extreme lightweight made it excellent for quick slashing cuts and pinpoint stabs. In addition, the weapon's double clamshell guard aided in defense by protecting the user's hand, especially during one-on-one -on -one duels. Tales of the swashbuckling musketeers are world famous to this day and can be seen in the film The Three Musketeers. We use a pig carcass because it's something that we can understand when we see the cuts. It's very close to just basically its skin. Some other mediums have a very thick hide, a lot of hair, so you can't really see the cuts. With a pig carcass, when you cut like that, you can see the immediate damage that it does. It's very visual. When I'm using the rapier, I'd like to see all these nice cuts as I'm moving them around. For every movement, pop. Ooh, that simple move like a whip has a very deep cut. So the patterns we see on the thing is like just writing a canvas. This is what we do, this is the motions, and these how deep the cuts are. Now, it's awesome to see these musketeer blades cut a pig in half, but in reality, they're not supposed to. They're not supposed to be that heavy. Some of the tests, we go, wow, that really performed well, but it's not supposed to function that way. If it's a heavy sword, you're just gonna leave it at home. Good luck, gentlemen. We'll see you in four days. Or is Good luck. Holy crap. My name's Teddy Royer, and I'm a welder for an uh, excavation company. My wife puts up with a lot in the garage with a forge and not enough room for her car, so she's hoping I, I win to show it's not wasted garage space, it's useful. So I, I'm using 5160. It's tough, it's springy. The rapier, since they're so thin, they are meant to flex a little bit, so that's what we're going with. I've got the entire blade shaped, it's beveled. I'm satisfied with where I'm at. It's not biting, it's not skating quite right. I realize I have to requench, I have to reharden this. I just want to make sure that when it gets to the judges, it's going to survive whatever they throw at it. I don't see any warps. So that is without a doubt hard. The elements I have to get finished are the knuckle bow, two sidebars, and a pommel. There's your knuckle bow. The fin finish that I'm going to put on it is going to look rugged, but clean, pretty, and just the overall well-constructed piece. $10,000 worthy, no doubt. Jesse Ewing's my name, 34 years old, and I kill bugs for a living. Pest control, good stuff. I know that to come on Forge and Fire is a huge undertaking. However, I know that I have the skills and passion to go all the way. So I'm gonna go with bar stock size of 80 CRV2, super strong, should hold up very well to the testing. That's gonna be the hardest part because I don't know what it has to survive. With all the factors involved in this quench, the low roof of the garage, the tall quench tank, a ladder just to reach above it, I'm hoping that I can get it right the first time. Oh, damn it. Catastrophically, the sword drops out of my hands. I hear the tip hit the bottom of the tank. I pull the sword out of the quench. I see this huge bow. I got to get this thing in my straightening jig. I have no idea what's going to come out. I'm really scared. I'm really nervous. Hoping for the best and praying for a miracle. So the sword's cooled off in the straightening jig. Let's see if I just uh, performed a miracle here. It's time to open it up and see what's inside. Holy crap. There's slight warpage on there, but nothing crazy that I can't fix with a grinder. She's hard. I've never made a sword before, so I'm ecstatic right now. 
So with my blade mostly done, and I've already got the clamshell guard fitted out. Guard fits. For this handle, I'm gonna go with a nice hardwood and offset that with different color micarta, and then epoxy together so I can shape it off of the sword. Oh, gosh. I go to remove the handle, and she's stuck. I really don't know what the heck to do at this point. Seriously contemplating taking this thing to the bandsaw, and I look at the sword, and the rear part is separated. I think I can save this. Try it again second time. Oh, imagine that. And that's how it should have went the first time. Yeah, that came together pretty nice. With the time I got left, I'm going to start shaping all these quillions and knuckle bows and all that fruit fruit stuff on the handles. The blade itself, I'm pretty much happy with the geometry of it, but I want to see if I can remove some weight at the tip. I want Doug to be swinging that thing all over the place and having a good time with it. But now that everything's permanently affixed, just got to clean it up, sharp it up a little bit. I can't wait to see the judges test this thing. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. I'm going to take your rapiers and deliver some killing slashes and thrusts on this big carcass. For these musketeer swords, it's time to find out if you're all for one champion or one for all the runner-ups. <laughs> Jesse, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's cut some bacon. You gotta work out. All right, Jesse, this edge is sharp. A rapier cut a big in half? <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> for every slash, the edge lands exactly where I want it to be. Okay. Overall, sir, for this test, it will keep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready, Teddy? Let's do it. All right, Teddy, your edge. When you're slashing with the razor's edge that you have on your blade, it slices easily and deeply on this big carcass. Your weapon, sir, will kill. Awesome. Nice. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, little thing I like to call the wheel of pain. Now, a rapier needs to be a fast, light, flexible weapon. We're going to see how flexible yours are. All right, Jesse, so I've got your blade strapped into our wheel of pain right now. Now, I'm going to be flexing it in both directions. I'll be taking it all the way to that far red peg, holding it for about three seconds, and we'll see if it comes back true, and then we'll go in the other direction, all right? Go nuts. True, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, Jesse, first off, remarkable. But I mean, there's a lot of weight in this blade, a lot of mass. So to have it flex the way it did and come back virtually to true, this blade is still straight enough to fight with, which is excellent. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Teddy, you ready for this? Let's do it.
there's a pretty significant bend in the blade. I'm definitely terrified at this point. So, Teddy, you can see where it took the bends here and here. And the initial bend, it actually bent this way. And then we bent it back, and it went the other way. So it, it leaves some question about the heat treat, you know, how, how even it is through the blade. It, you know, it's just, I worry about that bend. So, guys, I mean, you know, it's a finesse weapon. These things are about speed and accuracy and light and fast. Bladesmith's a musketeer's rapier is a finesse weapon, and Teddy, unfortunately, a less than perfect heat treat has led to your rapier taking a permanent bend. Now, this is gonna affect accuracy when it comes to the use of the weapon in our sharpness test. And for that reason, this is a catastrophic failure and you cannot continue with this competition. Come on forward, my friend. I've had a blast. I've made a few good friends. I've been able to take time and build something that I otherwise wouldn't have built. So the experience has been great. Jesse, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion and that is the title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job, brother. I'm on cloud nine. This is probably the most fun I've ever had doing hard labor. I proved to myself that I'm capable to do a whole lot more than I thought I could.